Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Avorian. When I last left Avorian, I was working on this ship, the Venture. And the Venture did have a bit of a power problem. Now, I was able to mine a bit of titanium off screen and was able to install these additional generators. So now I generate about 5.37 gigawatts of power and I require only 3.29. At least that's in the normal configuration. When I'm actually making jumps, I'm going to be reusing a lot more power, but hopefully not too much yet. The ship still has its eight mining lasers, and I have been able to bring it over from there, where it originally was with the seven provinces, all the way over here. And this is one of those big asteroids that I've found. This is a big iron asteroid. It has 101,000 iron in it, which, as I have previously mentioned, I won't be able to mine terribly efficiently. But let's say you got about 15% of that. That's 15,000 iron. Considering I sell off iron at about four a pop. That means that this one rock is going to yield me 60,000 iron. Now, I'm currently mining this manually, but of course I could let the Venture do this all by itself. And just note how quickly all of these parts from the asteroids are getting mined. This is what you get when you have eight mining lasers on a ship. The reason that I've transported the Venture over here, uh, it took a couple of jumps and a jump gate, but she finally made it here, was that the closer that you get, the more rich the asteroids become, and the better your chances of actually finding titanium, because that proved to be a little challenging. So finally, I have titanium, I have a couple of upgrades installed for the ship, the ones that I've done in previous episodes. She now has eight mining lasers, and more importantly, she can power her own jumps which previously took a lot of time because the generator just was not strong enough to actually get the ship uh, jump and then do another jump relatively soon. That fortunately has been fixed and she's now capable of making quite a lot of jumps. What I want to do now is let the Venture just go off and do her own business. The mining that she is uh, turning into such a great ship for and in the meanwhile, just have the provinces go out and scout again closer to the center of the universe. Hoping to find yet more titanium. So I'm going to do a bit of a scouting run and then potentially tell the Venture to come over and start mining that stuff. So that the Venture can then mine it, I can upgrade the seven provinces. I can continue on my missions and I can finally get towards the center of the universe. But getting to the center of the universe is going to take me probably dozens and dozens of episodes so um, don't worry about this uh, series running out anytime soon I have for quite a while been thinking about how I would do a stream of this game and I haven't quite worked it out yet here's my thinking when I'm doing these videos I want there to be a sort of continuity I don't mind doing some things off screen because they're not terribly interesting but adjusting ships, building stuff like that, I want that to be a sort of continuous progress. So that when you watch episode 3, episode 4 doesn't suddenly come with 50 more ships that I've built in the meanwhile. If I do a stream of this series and um, I don't upload that, then the stream can suddenly be a hell of a lot farther ahead. So that doesn't quite work. On top of that, on a stream, the whole point of the stream usually is to interact with the audience, with you guys, supposedly that you were watching the stream. And that means that um, it wouldn't be, I think, as relaxing of content as it is now. So I don't quite know what to do with that idea. I could go for a separate save game just for the stream. And uh, every now and then when I'm feeling like it, I might do a bit of a stream in the evenings, something like that. But then again, um, if you watch the stream and then you come back to the YouTube videos, you go, well, hold on, what? Where am I? Why am I seeing different ships? It could be confusing, and I don't really want it to be. So if you have any good ideas on how to proceed and how to fix that situation, then please let me know, because I'm, uh, I'm looking for inspiration. I'm looking for your ideas. Oh crap, the Seven Provinces doesn't have a captain, so I'm going to have to fly that thing manually. Alright, let's switch over to the sector and jump. Okay. Venture, you can continue to mine. And in the meanwhile, I'll jump closer towards the center. 
I really hope that there's an additional equipment dock there somewhere. Because right now I still have... Oh, actually, I need to install the double bolter turret. Uh, not only that, I also need an additional turret control system. Were there any of those on sale at the moment? Because this does switch out every now and then. Oh, it's just an internal defense system. Internal defense weapon systems defend your ship against boarding, but I've never even had my ship being boarded. And I've played the game for quite a bit now. Maybe later on they try to do it. Maybe it's a multiplayer thing. I don't know. But at least for now, I don't really consider it too big of a risk. So unfortunately, I'll have to look for a different equipment dock. Um, was there another equipment dock somewhere? Yes, all the way over there. That's not closer towards the edge. Or close towards the center. It's close towards the edge. So that's not where I want to go. Alright, let's just go on a couple of jumps. That's the one jump. It's empty space. There is an unknown energy signature here, and that usually implies that there's a station. And that also gets backed up by the line that's coming to the southwest of Coal of Tribulation. And that means that there could be additional star bases in here. Okay, what do we have? We have... Oh, we have a turret factory. I haven't explained these yet, because I haven't really come across them yet, but here's how these work. You have a turret factory, you can build your own turrets. It's a really nice feature, it can also get really expensive. I currently have the options of going for iron salvaging turrets, double point defense uh, chain gun turrets, iron mining turrets again, double chain gun turrets, or double bolter turrets. Then, over here on the right, you have a couple of parts that you can install. So if I install more servos, the fire rate goes up. It goes 4 to 8, 4 to 9, 5, 5 to 2, etc. This also makes the gun more expensive. Because, well, that's a, actually it makes the gun more expensive in a different way. Because these servos, you have to buy those. I can also install additional high pressure tubes to make sure that I have a range of 7.6. I can get more ammunition, which ups the firepower. The DPS just went up. Uh, and the damage, of course, with that. Explosive charges, again, damage. 131 DPS. And I can install targeting systems, which would then allow these things to start firing automatically. So, independent targeting, like I have shown you previously with the mining turrets. The thing is, um, it's expensive to do so. Manufacturing one of these turrets would cost me 200,000, I think, with a surcharge of 76,000. And on top of all that, I would have to buy all of these parts, all of these components. So this is very much something that I would need to do at a later stage, because right now it is, well, it is doable, but it's really expensive to do. They do have a nice quad bolter turret here, though. How much firepower could I crank out of that if I up all of these? 157 DPS. It's not great. What if I want to build my own custom mining turret? 3.7. <clears throat> That's the amount of damage that you're going to put out, 3.7. You can see, though, that with more laser modulators, the efficiency goes up, which means that you're effectively mining more stuff from the same asteroid. These are not terribly expensive. I would need laser compressors and laser modulators, high-capacity lenses, conductors, steel, and no targeting systems. Steel is cheap, I know that, but laser compressors and laser modulators and high-capacity lenses are not. So let's see if they have them available. They have high-capacity lenses, they have laser modulators. But, what was that third part that they needed? Uh, laser compressors. Fortunately, there's also usually a turret factory supplier in the same system. High capacity lenses, yeah, I'm not seeing that. Oh, her, hold on, laser modulators. This is usually why I have either uh, a digital notepad on hand or an actual notepad and pen, because I want to know what I need to build. So if I want to build this particular turret, I'm just going to write this down. 
I need a laser compressor. And that's three of them. Well, actually, no more. It's going to be four of them. I need uh, laser modulators. I need high capacity lenses and conductors. I need steel. And I don't need the targeting systems because they'd just be used by the venture as main armaments. So 11 steel, seven conductors, uh, let's see, six high capacity lenses, and four laser modulators. All right. Whoops, this one, trade goods. It does have high capacity lenses. So we have that one. I have laser compressors. No, actually, I don't have laser compressors. I have laser modulators here. There are conductors for sale. There's steel for sale. Um, so I still need the laser compressors. Does the turret factory supplier have those? No, they do not. Well, there goes that plan, which is, on the other hand, a good situation because it means that I'm going to be saving a bit of money. Let's see if they have any very rich asteroids in here that I can sell off. It always feels a bit weird when you claim an asteroid inside a faction's already claimed system and then you sell it back to them. It is pretty rare to find one in their own systems, though. Yeah, not much going on. As for the mine, the, the roids themselves, I'm seeing some iron roids. Here's another iron, another one. Titanium here, or is it? No, sorry, it was a station. More iron. Hmm. Not terribly interesting, all of this. Okay. What can I get from the resource depot? Hmm. They don't have anything on sale. That's unfortunate. Because I was kind of hoping that they would have some. Alright. Let's continue with the jumps. But through the gate system that they have set up. North and northeast gate. Gate to Call of Tribulation 5. Uh, that's the one right here. That's... Oh, that's north-northeast. Sorry, that's the wrong gate. West-northwest. Gate to Call of Tribulation 2. That's where I'm going. In the meanwhile, the Venture has gotten its uh, iron lasers once again into one of those bigger rocks by the looks of it. Once again, up to 30,000 iron. And I also saw a bit of titanium tick in, but not nearly as much as I was hoping. Now, initially, you might be really struggling to find these resources. You might be starved for titanium. You might have uh, just a trickle of trinium. But late game or later game, you're going to have lots and lots and lots. What do we have here? That's a trading post. Three trading posts, a resource depot and a repair dock. All right. Does this resource depot have any titanium for sale? It does. So for 13,000, I can get another 1,046 titanium. I'll actually get that. Because sure enough, I like the venture and I believe in its capabilities. But there is just not a lot of titanium that's currently around. So I'm going to have to try and find a bit more using uh, the seven provinces here. And in the meanwhile, I'll just have to buy some. Because I do want to keep this ship growing. And something else that I really have to work on is the reverse. I was complaining about it in the previous episode, but I haven't done yet anything about it. Because I didn't quite have the materials to do so. With an additional 1000 titanium though, that might change. Tractor beam. Thank you very much. All right, trade resources. I will buy all of your titanium. It's going to set me back 13,700. And I will sell off another 30,000 iron. And that got me 112,000. And in the meanwhile, the iron is already being restocked by the venture. 
Okay. The provinces. I'm going to remove this big iron armor block. And just focus on making the ship lighter for a bit. So I'm going to go with titanium armor. Because that will also allow me to make the ship less sluggish. So that's titanium armor now. This is titanium armor now. You can subtly see the change in the material. I believe I already have part of the nose. Yep, that one. Rotate. That one. That one. That's still titanium. That's titanium. This is iron corner. Let's rotate that. Now what you can see happening if I replace these is that my acceleration goes up but I do lose out on hull. So it seems like titanium... Oh, yeah, that's why. Um, oh, this is corner armor. I'm trying to upgrade the wrong thing. No, hold on. This is the one that I want to copy. I want to paste that over there. So what happens if I do this is that uh, my hyperspace cooldown goes lower a bit by 0 0.6 seconds. Acceleration improves, hull improves, um, and even roll and pitch improve. Because the ship is just made up out of a lighter material. This is more corner armor. That bit... Oh, that's still iron. Okay. This is titanium. I think I have almost the entire ship drawn up out of titanium at the moment. Although the iron edges over here, they still need work. So that's going to be a titanium edge corner. Same there. Okay. What is the next step for this ship? Power generation is fine. Slowing down is not so fine. 32 meters per second. So what I'm going to do next is over here, in the length of it, set up a bunch of reverse thrusters. Like that, and then the full length of the ship. That's going to slow me down by another 22.9 meters per second. Should make the ship a bit more maneuverable. Also in fights, because I'm trying to turn around and trying to make the ship dodge and weave. I'm going to tear the engines out of this side. And let's see, deceleration's good enough. Let's put a couple more directional thrusters on here. And yeah, I'll take another one. Fuse those together, like that. That improved the yaw and the pitch and the roll. Next step, get the engines back in before I waste all of my titanium. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go for a slightly different design here. <clears throat> I'm going to make the ship a bit wider, and I know that I'm using iron here. That's mostly because I want my engines to be made out of titanium. So I still have to save a bit of titanium. Otherwise, I won't be able to afford what I want. Uh, this one has to rotate. And then... An iron edge. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Hold up. The problem is this slanted armor... What I want is to build my ship out... Oh, hold on, I have an idea. I have an idea. If I go for a twisted corner, does that work? No, that's not the right one. Nope. I haven't really worked with these things a lot, so I'm still learning to use them. 
No, that's not the one. Maybe just an iron corner. No, the thing is, I want to have these things protrude. Hmm. Let's make these things a little longer. That's still part of the reverse thruster system. Temporarily fill all of this up with framework. Here too. And then, yeah, just the whole bit. Like that. Okay. What I want to do now is put another... Oh, crap. Hold on. Where is my titanium or my, my structural, uh, structural integrity field? Okay, it does still extend all over the ship. That's really important. The last thing that I want is for ships or for parts to start falling off the ship. That would be really bad. Okay, let's go for titanium blank hole. Like that. I just have 534 left. This is the kind of design that I want to go for. Ooh, that was the, that was the last of my titanium. Uh, ship can do 411 current. Your pitch and roll still need a lot of work. She does slow down very quick. <laughs> so that's something. Alright. She doesn't look very pretty. I'm gonna have to work on that. Let's see if I can kill something in the meanwhile. And potentially find more asteroids to mine. Ooh, lots and lots. And another wreckage. Any good asteroids in here? Yes. Could use some. Nah, it's nothing. It's just a bunch of standard asteroids. That is disappointing. Hmm. Alright. Let's go somewhere else then. What else is my radar detected? Unknown energy signature. No. I want unknown hidden mass signatures. Unknown energy. Energy. Alright, fine. I'll go for the energy signature instead. What do we have here? That looks like a really nice asteroid to sell. And in the meanwhile, anything good here? That looks like a... Yeah, that's a titanium rock. It's a big titanium rock at that. Hold on. Uh, Venture. Would you kindly come over here for a sec? Because I have just the rocks for you here. Sure enough, there's more titanium here. There's also a bit of iron, as can be expected. But the titanium is very, very interesting here. Looks promising. I still need to install an upgrade for the Ventures jump drive. Because right now she's just not doing... Oh, she's not even moving. Oh... Because I told it to do so after it had actually completed its original order, which was to mine. So it would only be jumping after it had mined every single asteroid in the sector that looked promising. Interact, claim, and sell. 105,000. Thank you kindly. Any other big, promising, sell-worthy rocks? Ah, Venture's here. You got here quick. Very nice. Alright, mine away. Here she comes. Let's just follow the Venture for a second. 
See what her priorities are going to be. I think she uses the mining system that I have installed to just go for the closest asteroid that it can find. And currently that seems to be another iron rock. Look at that, that was a 466 quick jolt on one asteroid. Next up. Looks like it's going to be that one. Mining away. First cracking the outer layer. That's a hundred. I still love how this game can be so exciting and so peaceful at the same time. Or well, maybe not exactly at the same time, but in the sense that you can just watch your own ships do your bidding. Or you can go off and... Um, do some shooting or just a bit of calm station building. You have so many different options. All right, Venture, you can stay here and have some fun. And I'll go and check out this hidden mass signature. Oh, a wormhole. Wormholes are very, very long distance jump gates. That's the easiest way to describe them. The only difference is with a jump gate, you pay a bit of a fine between the systems that you're traveling in. So in this case, I'd pay a fine to the uh, Democratic Mnuliov Guild. And with a jump or with a wormhole, it's not like that. It also seems to point towards the center of the galaxy. So it could allow me to jump quite far. Let's explore. Well, before I go exploring, by the way, I still need to install that better turret. Uh, the double bolter turret. Look at that. DPS 50, DPS 229. Yes, thank you. That's better. Set those up as system 1. And off we go. The bolter turret is the one on the right. They do tend to overheat, though, as opposed to the chain guns. So that's a bit of a downside. Sometimes you're going to have a bunch of burst damage, and then the next moment you're going to have nothing. Oh, Venture finds the titanium. Very good, Venture. Very good. Where are we now? That's a long jump. Now we're being contacted by the adventurer. Hi there, I see you've started to venture out. As soon as you start to do that, a second ship can come in very handy. You don't say. In order to command another ship, you need a captain on it. For training purposes, I'll lend you one of my ships that can that already has a captain. Please don't damage it. Okay. Now, open the strategy mode with F9 and order the Lady Adventurous to fight closer to you. Alright, Lady Adventurous, I need you to come here. This is a ship that uh, I will take permanent control over. You can do with it as you please. It's a bit of a gift from the game. You can set it up as a combat ship. You can set it up as a ship that's there to assist you. You can set it up as a ship that might be going on salvaging operations, mining, whatever you want it to do. And in the strategic map, if you have a ship selected on the right hand side, you can then tell it to do whatever you want. Attack, board, guard position, patrol sectors, mine, salvage, etc. Now that you know how to give orders to ships in the same sector, let's try issuing orders to ships in other sectors. This is pretty much what I've already been doing. The possibilities are endless, but for now, let's just make Lady Adventures jump to the marked sector and immediately return again. Remember, you can enchain commands by holding shift. Keep in mind that other ships and stations delay the hyperspace recharge. If they are hostile, they may even try to disturb your recharge, which will result in a longer recharge time. Okay, so I'm taking the Lady Adventurous and jumping over there and jumping right back. Now she's over here. And she's going to recharge her hyperdrive and she's going to come right back. Ah, there's our lady. Now you know how to command your fleet. You can keep Lady Adventures and her crew. I hope she can show you just how useful a fleet can be in this vast galaxy. I'm off for a to look for a way to cross the Great Barrier. See you. So I just got donated a ship. Let's have a look at her. This is uh, a bit of a, a weird contraption. 
The Lady Adventuress, she has a whole 225 points of hull. She has exactly one crew member. <laughs> it's pretty much a non-existent ship, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, what I could do with it is allow it to mine. Unfortunately, I don't have mining turrets, but I do have salvaging turrets. So provided that I can put a couple of miners on this ship, I can then use it to start salvaging. And with that, start digging up stuff from wreckages. Let's uh, jump over here for a sec. Without the lady, that is. I first need to know if it's safe, because by contrast, my ship has 6.19 thousand hit points. The lady has 225. So the lady is a lot more fragile. Okay. Pirates. How many? Just the four of them. Well, the four of them now. Oh, look. Wreckages. <laughs> I didn't plan this, but <laughs> I don't mind. Because it means that... Let's see, if I transfer a bit of crew from this ship to the other one... I could then have miners on the lady. And I can have the lady just start salvaging whatever's in here. But before I do that, I first have to know what sort of firepower these guys have. And if the venture can reliably take those on. I did see that I mined a whole bunch more titanium. So now I can actually start to upgrade the ship more. What I still need is better yaw and roll control. So let's go for a titanium gyro array. And this is going to add a lot more roll. Now let's rotate uh, that block. There the hell? <clears throat> that was a bit of a glitch. And rotate uh, this one like that. Uh, over here. How does that help with my roll, though? It's, oh, never mind. It's supposed to help with pitch, but... It's because I had... There you go. It's because I had that block selected. No. Look, it's wrong. It says it's going to help with roll, but if I install them like this, it's going to help with my pitch. There you go. Now it uh, sees it as the correct block that it is. More pitch. And... <laughs> I just ran out of titanium again. How's my structural integrity field? Very important. Okay, it's still good enough. Very good. Now, let's see what sort of firepower these guys have. Jeez, there are a lot of wrecks around. Is that what they're protecting? Look at this. Here, there, there. This seems like a big one. Yeah, they're definitely trying to protect this wreckage. Uh, firepower, 34.8 microns. By contrast, my ship has a firepower of 325. So I have 10 times the firepower that that thing has. This thing also has 34.8. 47.8. Yeah, I'm going to take these guys out. Let's try that new weapon. Holy shit. Okay, that new gun, I'm a fan. don't stand a chance. Where's the last one? Here. This one has a firepower of 47. Well, had. More like. Oh, they beamed in the reinforcements. Fine, I'll take those down as well. All the more wrecks for me to mine. What you got there? 95. This thing has more firepower. They don't seem to be that damaging to my ship, though. Destroyed. Next up. She does turn a hell of a lot faster now. Down. Maybe the last one here. Target destroyed. Boom. Oh, hello. Jeez, there's more of them. 
thought it was done. Usually it's four ships and then four reinforcements. But it seems that even the reinforcements called in reinforcements. Uh, I did pick up a radar upgrade. That's another one. You're next. Smack. Turn. Jeez, more ships. What the hell did I wander into here? Some sort of unofficial pirate scrapyard. Yeah, there's another one. Sort off, dude. Have you not seen what happened to the other eight pirate ships that I destroyed in a matter of two minutes? Destroyed. I guess they haven't. More? Or is that it? No, there's one more. Destroyed. Right, so if it wasn't a scrapyard before, then it sure as hell is now. Hold on, is that a legendary upgrade? A double laser turret. That is an exotic, even. Oh, this thing is going to be good. 167 DPS. Let's get rid of that double chain gun. Put the laser on one side. And the double bolter on the other. And then set them both up to weapon slot one. Alright, so what did I get? I got a generator upgrade, I got two petty chain guns, I got a radar upgrade, these things I already had, uh, these things I no longer really need. Jeez, what a mess. This is not unusual that you um, cause a bit of a mess throughout <laughs> your ventures across space as you blow up more and more ships. Bloody hell, there's a lot to pick up here. There is an upgrade you can get for your ship, which allows loot, which is what these things are that I'm picking up, to uh, get beamed in earlier, or from a greater range. So you don't constantly have to fly all the way around, like I'm doing right now. But loot can be picked up by, I think, Six, seven hundred meters, depending on what sort of upgrade you have. Um, I think it's time to find a good star base. Get the lady upgraded. And just completely turn her into a scrapping ship. Because there is a lot to scrap here. Alright, let's add a note. Attack the sector. Add the notes. Pi pi roots scrapyard of sorts. So now I need a good inhabited an inhabited system like that, <coughs> and hopefully they have stations because I need those. Okay, where are we? Yeah, we got a repair dock, a resource depot, and a trading station. These guys are all neutral to me, and this is a different empire. The Commonwealth of the Yok Kuf Pyo. Um, might be better to just get rid of the, my other ship. Ooh, 6,800. Just get rid of my other ship. That's the lady. If these guys have a captain available, that is. This one does not. This one does not. Resource depot, please. No. Shit. Uh, all right. I'm gonna have to have the lady jump and jump and jump and jump again and jump again and jump again. There. So she's gonna be jumping around quite a bit. And in the meanwhile, I can refine what little cargo I have aboard the Seven Provinces. Because I have picked up a bit of scrap iron and a bit of scrap titanium on my voyages. And I can now have that refined into actually usable resources.
And with the additional titanium and the money, I can also build out the ship a bit better. Because I don't quite like what it's right now. I think I can do a lot better. Oh, lady's almost here. Excellent. Lady's definitely going to be my scrapper ship. Oh, she's here. Good. I just saw the little icon over here pop up. Does this resource depot have anything for trade? Neonite! Oh, yes, please. Neonite is my salvation, especially when it comes down to fighting, because Neonite allows you to build shield generators. And with shield generators, your hull does not take damage. That is, unless your shields are down, of course. But if you have a powerful generator and a bunch of shielding, you're going to be fine for the majority of the time. Refine these ores. Thank you. And then, trade resources. It is pretty expensive stuff. But I have a bunch of cash. So I'll take 5,000. Thank you very kindly. That was 128,000. And it also improved relations with that faction. I can sell off iron, but because my relations with this faction aren't that good, I'm only getting 3,000. Or sorry, 3. Instead of the, what was it, 4.2 that I got from a previous faction. Right, Neonite. The Neonite Shield Generator. Replace this. And now I'm going to have a shield of 2.36 thousand. But I want a lot more than that. Unfortunately, shield generators take up a ton of Neonite. Let's pull up a bit more of a generator on the bottom end of the ship here. there. Now I'm generating a lot more than what I need. With intent. Oh crap, I didn't quite build it correctly. Should be down a little bit more. Like that. And then not too wide, but over the length of the ship. There. Alright, I'm generating... Four, no, I'm generating 15.22 gigawatts, and I'm only requiring about 5. But that's with the additional generators in mind. I still need to fix my yaw, though. And I also want to fix my engines. Which I can now pretty easily do. Because I have a lot more titanium. Alright. Titanium engines here. They don't quite want to fit on the same block that I have in mind, so I'll just have to do it like this. And then fuse those together. Top speed. 441. I'm going to need more engines. Top speed, 539. Yaw is 0.49. I can do better than that. I don't like this design. I want to try something else. I want to try a design pretty much like what I had at the start of the venture. So the four engine pylons. Two up there and two somewhere down there. Um, how am I going to do that? Titanium. I don't need titanium edge armor anymore because shielding is now your main priority. So it's just going to be a blank hole. Like that, but only wider. And then here, roll that the other way. No, not like that, the other way. There. Oh, crap. All right, then on the side, so let's say the wing tips, I want to have my thrusters. Because the farther you put these thrusters out, the more they're actually going to do for you. Imagine trying to grab a doorknob, so let's say a door handle, at the smallest point where it reaches the door. It's going to be very hard to turn, to turn the door. If you put it at the far edge of the door handle, it's going to be much easier to grab onto. And you don't need nearly as much strength in order to just turn the doorknob. So a couple of thrusters there and a couple of thrusters here. 
Um, I also need a couple of thrusters oriented sideways, like that. This is only going to add a speed of 264. I could just make it one huge engine over here. Might not be a bad idea, but I will need a lot of reverse thrusters because it's going to be very tempting to go fast. But then I might find that slowing down is not something that this ship does particularly well. There. <clears throat> One big engine bar. Speed, 558. If I want to do something similar up here, I'm first going to have to get more titanium because I don't have enough. Speeding up's fine. Slowing down uh, could be better. More directional thrusters pointing forward. Or an iron inertia dampener. There you go. <clears throat> That's another... 0.42 that I can use to slow down. Just add a layer there. There she goes. Deceleration, 83.9. Very good. Power is still good. 6.42 generated, 15... Sorry, 6.44 used versus 5.22... 15.22 generated. Uh, I do want to try and make these things look a little sleeker. Like there's some sort of engine nacelles. Okay, I'm guessing we're going to start here. No, which block was that? This block. A nose block, <clears throat> let's say. One there, one there. And then one of those. Stick that in here and... Yep, that's what I wanted. Okay. Oh, I'm building armor. Oh, it's not bad. I'm going to have more hit points, <coughs> which is useful. Titanium blank hole edge. Roll those the right way around. Elongate. There. And then I'm going to need another one of these, I think. Yep. And another corner block. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not the right one. There. And then it's going to be a bit tricky to fit this in here. No, too far. There, that's it. Let's copy this armor block here and put it down there. So now I also created another whole area of space where I can put additional modules. So let's put a titanium framework in there. Meaning I can very quickly upgrade it, providing that I have enough resources to do, though, of course. That's the one. And here. Alright, there's another big space here. No, hold on, I don't like that. They're sticking out too much. There and there. There and here and here. Okay. I am not disappointed. Titanium blank hole. Corner. Uh, titanium edge like this. Oh crap, how are those aligned? Yeah, that's what I want. That's how I want to align them. And then another one up here. That's a bit too much. 
bit flatter. Like that. I'm going to maintain that edge and just have it slowly descend onto the ship. Wider though. Yep, connected. And I could have another crew compartment there. I still have enough space as it is right now. But I think it could be a nice look for the ship. It is a bit too much though at the moment. Alright, never mind then. Titanium blank hole. Again, this is stuff that I can later fill in. Oh, this one's still one of those corners. Yeah, see? Bit less. There. And then this one. Turn it. Bit wider. There. Yeah, this ship still needs a lot of work. There's a lot more to fill in. Temporarily, I'm going to put another titanium framework over here. I'm not a big fan of these corners here. I'll probably have to do a rework on that in a bit. And something I haven't done yet is paint the ship. Uh, usually, I don't pay too much attention to it. But you have a lot of options here. Like, a lot, a lot. Um, I quite like the design as it is right now. So I'm not going to do it too much more. you got the titanium ore look, the iron ore look. Uh, you can just go with eternal snow if you want to. Uh, how did you do that again? Yeah, you just hold left click and you paint over it. I think, however, that a dark color... So let's say a black collar might be quite effective. Because I don't really want to stand out in space too much. I'm a combat ship. I'm a warship. I'm trying to blend in. Not that it's going to offer me any sort of stealth or concealment or whatnot. But it's more for my feeling. And again, I don't care about aesthetics most of the time. But in this case, I'm challenging myself to make it also look quite good. All right, and then I'll go with one line over the side. No. No thanks. Um, what if I go right over the nose? Oh, yeah, I could go right over the nose, but then the blocks don't line up properly. That can be resolved, however. I can just put another cargo, no, crew bay in here. The crew quarters. So I can make that one big block. I'm not sure what this used to be. Oh, that used to be a crew quarters. <laughs> okay. Fine. See, now actually building the ship is already getting a bit more complex because I cannot really see what I'm doing. Make it smaller. There. Oh, they're too wide. They're overlapping. I don't like overlaps. No, height's all right. Length is a problem. There, now I'm not overlapping. All right, back to black. And then this one also needs to be adjusted. It needs to be one block, which is going straight up. Uh, spin. Those need to be a bit wider. Yep, like that. And then one sleeker one over there 
So now I can paint this one into... Oh, what did I have? I have no idea what color that was. What about eternal yellow? Yeah, same thing here. Alright, so I need to adjust this block as well. That was a titanium edge. And that lined up to this, I think. <coughs> it's getting really hard to see. Just another reason why I usually don't paint my ships. You don't know what you're doing. Because <laughs> it's hard to spot what sort of colors you went for. Uh, that was eternal yellow. There. And over here I have the grid, 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 grid. No, not like that. Okay, um, let's stop it here for the temporary rework of this ship. I'm going to put iron framework here in the back. Again, to sort of finish off the ship and allow for a modularity later. A bit more. Oh, come on. That is the right size-ish. No, not quite. Oh, you're sticking through another block. No, actually, you're allowed to do that. But up here, it's not allowed to do that. It needs to be a bit sleeker. That is another option. Just put it up like that. All right, let's see if it actually flies. She rolls quite well. Pitch could use a bit of work. And yaw isn't great either. Now there is something I can do to fix the yaw. I already have these thrusters which are pushing out the side. I just need to put another couple of thrusters somewhere in the middle of the ship which are doing the same thing. Because then you have thrusters which are pushing on one side, let's say, towards the right. These are pushing towards the left, and that allows me to pitch and yaw faster. Sorry, not pitch and yaw, yaw faster. So this is going to be a directional thruster, oriented like that. And I don't have the titanium for it. Crap. Wow, that added a whole... 0.6, 0 0.6, no, 0 0.06 to my yaw. Oh, that's dreadful. That's really dreadful. Also, my deceleration is slower than my acceleration. Sorry, faster. <laughs> so this ship is really good at speeding up. Or at slowing down, but not so good at speeding up. Gotcha. Right, well, with this, I'm going to end the uh, episode here. We don't, got quite a bit of work done. Finally, a shield generator on the ship. Definitely better guns, as we have seen. And the next part of the operation is going to be to turn the existing ship over there, the Lady Adventurous, into the uh, Lady Salvaging, which is going to go back to the sector where I was a moment ago, that private scrapyard. Sorry, <laughs> pirate scrapyard, not private scrapyard. And go do my bidding. Tear those ships apart. Find the resources that are in there. And maybe just get a few more nice upgrades out of them. That's probably going to be a bit more design work. So join me next time as we're continuing with this series. And with the design work of course. And until then, thank you for watching. Have a good day. And I'll catch you guys soon for the next one.